Okay, hey, it's Mega here. I'm doing a video on how to set the sag or rear preload for your Suron Light B. So this is my Suron Light B here, and uh, I haven't I haven't like properly adjusted it yet. So uh, so the important thing when uh, every everyone has every rider has like uh, everyone's rider weight. You have to set you have to set the bike to the, a per, the the rider's weight basically and the rider weight is your weight and and the and with your gear on so when you do this you should try to put as much of your gear on as possible um, you should you should have the bike you know for the majority of the riding you're doing you should have the gear that you're wearing on so for for me I'm probably just gonna wear my jacket my pants and my boots so should add a couple pounds to myself so I'm I'm 5'10, 175 pounds, so if there's anybody like that's around that weight, then it would they, you know the bike would probably properly set up for you. So why why would you want to set the 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 sag or the rear preload is because uh, the the shock will sag. The shock sags when uh, when you when you sit on it when you put load on it. So they call this a static set. Is was called static sag. And um, and you want you want this the the shock absorber the shock to sit like almost in the middle of the uh, the stroke so that way that way it has a chance to dampen in both directions if uh, if you have too much preload the the shock tops out and if you don't have enough preload the shock will bottom out easily so and I'm looking at it right now oh there is a bump stop okay. <laughs> There's a little uh, black little rubber bump stop on the bottom of this. So uh, so yeah, um, you want this. You want it to sit in like the twenty for um, supposedly the twenty percent of the uh, of the stroke is where you want it to sit. Um, that way, that way you get proper dampening in both directions. So when I got this bike, the preload collar was like it was so loose that you could turn it by hand. So you you don't want you don't want it like that. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you don't. So, so for like for an initial preload adjustment, you probably want if you can turn this. So, so on the Suron, you have your rear shock. This is a fast ace rear shock, and and it has three adjustments. Um, you have the preload, compression, and and rebound. So that's what these little knobs are. So, what I'm going to show you today is how to adjust the uh, the preload. So the preload is adjusted by this collar here. There's no locking collar either, so, um, and and you adjust the sag by um, by tightening or loosening this, and and it what it does is it compresses or, or uncompresses the shock. So, um, if if you if you're too heavy for the shock or for the for the spring, um, you need to get a heavier spring. So if you if you're doing, if you're setting up the preload like I'm going to show you today, and it still sags too much, and and you you run out of adjustment, that means you need a bigger spring, or you you need a you need a stiffer spring. So yeah, um, so that's the idea behind that. And then the bike will be, the bike's ge geometry will be proper. You know, if it sags too much in the rear, your handling will be kind of lazy. It won't want to turn. If uh, if it's too uh, too much preload in the rear, then you lose um, you lose rake and it becomes less stable. The bike will become less stable. So also, so that's another reason that you want to set the preload properly. Um, it it made a world of difference on on this bike here, my impulse. So so it's it's pretty much the same for this bike, how to set it up. Uh, but but yeah yeah, there's a certain stuff that you have to do like, and I'll go over that for this bike. So. Supposedly from uh, from the Luna Cycles website, I think I, I'm I I don't think it even says it in the manual somewhere, uh, but they say that this bike has eight inches of travel. So one way you could do th measure that is um, one way you could measure the travel is to um, take the shock off, take the spring out, and then and then measure it when it's fully fully extended and then fully compressed and then that that's how much travel you have but I'm not gonna do that <laughs> um, just but for according to Luna cycles you have eight inches of travel in the rear um, 
so you want you want it to set it set it for twenty percent of that eight inches. So, and that's roughly about one. I think it's one point six inches or something. You want to do you want to get about one point five inches of sag on this. Okay, so let's go over uh, the process of how we're going to uh, ch to set the preload, and then I'll show you how to do it. You should have a shock wrench. If you don't have a a like a, the spanner wrench for the for the collar, you can probably use a screwdriver or like a punch or something and, and use it, hit it with a hammer, which is probably what I'm going to have to do. I don't think any of my spanner wrenches, actually I have, I have an example of what one looks like, but it's way too big. Yeah. So this is an example of a um, preload adjustment collar. Or, or for this is for adjusting the collars on a shock, but this is a this is way too big for that shock, and all the ones I have are too big for this. Um, you probably have to go to like a bicycle shop or something, uh, and get one if you if you're looking for one. Uh, but since I don't have one, I'm just gonna use a punch or uh, I'm gonna use a, a pry, prying lever and hit it with a hammer. Um, that's what I'm gonna do. So we're gonna have to take two measurements. Um, you have to take a measurement um, when it's fully rebounded, one when you're sitting on it, and then so so the suspension sags. So, and then you gotta you've got to adjust the collar so you get the proper um, the proper sag that 1.5 1.6 inches. So to do that, we're gonna use we're gonna I'm gonna so it helps if you have a helper. <laughs> it's a lot easier to do if you have a helper. But uh, I'm by myself, so I'm going to show you how to do it by yourself. But it helps a lot if you have a helper. Okay, so what I will be using to make the measurements is this uh, Stanley uh, tape measure. It's in inches. So so it's 8 inches of travel. Uh, let me go do that. I'll do the math. Okay, so just to, to show you um, the exact sag that you got you got to dial in. Um, so it was 8 inches of travel, and then you want 20%. So... You're going to multiply that times 0.2. That's 20. That gives us 1.6. So there you go. That's how I got that number. It's 20% of 8, which is 1.6 inches. So you want the suspension to sag 1. Point, around 1.6 inches is good. I might add a little bit extra because I might be wearing more gear later. You never know. Um, that's usually how I do it. <laughs> uh, most people say uh, just... Uh, Tighten the collar until it doesn't move anymore, and then like you know, tighten it a little bit more with a hammer or something, or or punch, and then and then you're good. But that's not that's not the proper way to do it. Um, this is the precise way that to do it to set your sag. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to uh, set up the uh, how how to measure the uh, the fully rebounded measurement. And uh, and if you're wondering, so the so where we're going to make the measurements. Um, usually what I'll do is I will get an arrow and I will stick it through the axle, but, but we can't do that because there's no hole on this side. It's just an Allen wrench thing. So like usually I'll stick an arrow, I do archery, so I'll stick an arrow through the axle, kind of like this. See how this one has a hollow axle? I'll stick your finger through it. And then I will measure it from the arrow to some point on the bike. So. So the important thing is you need to me you need to take the measurement from um, from the same place um, on the bike every time. So you're going to measure want to measure somewhere on the swing arm, preferably like you know kind of like where the axle is, and then to something on the bike that doesn't move. So what I what measurements I'm going to use are the tip of the fender here on the corner right here is where I'm going to measure from from here to this bolt right here that's on the caliper. Those are the measurements I'm going to take from. You could use a different measurement if you wanted, um, as long as you, you know, as long as you take the same measurement, um, like you could do from the top of the caliper to the the fender here. But I'm going to use the bolt here to the caliper. So just, yeah, I mean that caliper to fender. So just make sure you make the same measurements. It could be different for different bike, you know, if you want to measure somewhere else. But so. Um, so to take to get the uh, to get the fully uh, fully rebounded suspension measurement, the first the first measurement that we need to make, um, you need to un uh, unload the suspension. So um, if you have a helper, what you can do is have them. You can tip tip the bike over 
on the side stand like that and then there and then it doesn't uh and then and then it'll be fully extended but the bike is only like i know the bike is only like 100 pounds it doesn't sag it doesn't really sag that much one <laughs> i know it's so light it's so funny but anyway um so if you have a helper you can you can um you can have somebody push the bike or you can get something to prop it up on on the on the other side here and like pro have have like something propped up like get a jack and put it right here where the foot peg is and prop it up like this and then that would unload the suspension what i'm going to use is a harbor freight motorcycle jack here um, uh, since i'm doing it by myself so i'm going to go ahead and put it on the stand okay there it is so the bike the bike's uh rear rear wheel is off the ground make sure nothing is touching the swing arm um, right now it's been held up by the foot pegs, foot peg brackets. And so you can see there's nothing underneath. So the, t the suspension is totally unloaded right now. So you're going to want, and then, and then now we're going to go take our measurement. Okay. So I'm going to demonstrate taking the first measurement. So we're going to go get our tape measure here and then we're going to measure from the top of the bolt here. I'm just going to let it rest. So just make sure you use the same measurement device every time and you, you measure it the same way with the, the device that you're using. So here yeah, I'm just using a regular tape measure. I'm going to measure from the bolt here to the tip of the fender here. And I've got about, I got pretty much seven, if I, if I read it from the side here on the right, I've got 17 and a half inches. 17 and a half inches. That's what I got. So right around, right around here is just where I got 17 and a half inches. So, so that is our uh, fully rebounded sag. And then now, now's the time to go put our gear on, and then start sitting on the bike, and then take the next measurement. And then, then that's where the fun begins. So, so now I, I can take it off the stand, and then, uh, then yeah, I put my gear on. Okay. So just to make this more authentic, I put my helmet on. I know the helmet is probably a couple pounds. So I'm going to go ahead and drop this off the stand. Okay, so uh, if you have a helper, this is where your helper comes in handy the most. So what you got to do is you got to get on the bike and then you have to put your full weight on the bike. Um, and you can't have your feet on the ground. So um, this is where, where the helper comes in handy. <laughs> um, um, so. So what you can do is have your helper hold the handlebar and keep you from falling, and then and then take the measurement. So what I'm going to do is I got a I got a motorcycle I got a pretty beefy motorcycle here on the right. It's on its center stand, so it's pretty stable. I'm just going to kind of just prop myself up on there and then take the measurement. So okay, so now that I've kind of showed you what I'm going to do. I'm just going to go ahead and take the, I'm going to use, so what I'm going to use is the camera. The camera is going to be my eyeball to tell me what, um, what measurement. I'm okay. Doing. So the measure I'm, measurement I'm taking is from the fender. So I got to kind of try to see if we can do this. I want to sit on the bike. Take step. I'm going to kind of prop, I know this is hard, but I have to, I have to prop myself up a little bit. And then, make sure we get the right measurement. What is it in my jacket? Okay. 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 This is harder than I thought. Okay, whatever measurement that is. Okay. Okay, I need to take the measurement again because I could not read the tape measure. So there we go. I'm gonna go do it one more time so you guys can see the so I can see the number on the freaking thingy. Just, you should be sitting like how you would be riding fit. Okay. Okay. 
そうなんだはい。The measurement that I got, that I got when I sat on the bike was 15 and a, like 15 and three quarters. So,、um, we're gonna, so what we're gonna do is subtract 17.5 minus, was it 15 and three quarters? That's like 75. Boom. Okay, so we got 1.75 sag. So we've got a little bit. Too much sag. We want to shoot for 1.6, 1.5. So we got like, like a quarter inch too much. So, what we're going to want to do is tighten that shock up a little bit.、Um, yeah, so, so wait, wait, wait. To make this number smaller, yeah, to make this number smaller, we need to increase the preload. So, we got to increase the preload a tad.、Um, maybe like one full turn or something. So, and I'll go show you how to do that right now. So, so 1.7, 1. Yeah, 1.75 or 1 three quarter inches is our sag right now. And that's a little, a little too much.、Uh, we want well, a little less than that. So, yeah, you can see, like, when I sat on the bike, the suspension squatted like that. So, all right, so we need to increase the preload a little bit. I'll show you how to do that. I'm going to do it from the right side here. Okay, so since,、uh, since I already have the light on this side, I'm just going to do it on the left side. You can do it on both sides. So, just remember. To, to、uh, make the sag less, you need to tighten it. So, you need to, I need to hit this thing so the ring turns counterclockwise like this.、Um, so, the first thing you probably, well, yeah, before we start it, you want to make sure that there was no, there's no, it's not loose at all.、Um, so, you want to, it helps if you unload the suspension too,、um, but there's no, Yeah, so just try to tighten this as much as you can by hand, but、eh, I think that's it. That's all, she, that's all I'll do. So, so now we've got to break out the tools. So, what I'm going to try to use is a, a T handle,、uh, this guy, T handle socket, so I don't like scratch up the, the collar too much. And I'm just going to hit it with this rubber hammer here. There you go. So, you see it's moving. Scratch the black, you know, the way. Probably scratching the shock, though. So I probably want to do this until we get like a turn, you know. Kind of hard to tell because of the shadow, but. It's moving. Okay, so I think I've turned it close to full turn. Now it's time. So now it's time to go sit back on the bike and、uh, get that measurement. I will do it. I'll demonstrate it one more time for you, just for demonstration purposes. And then, and then when I get it right, I'll tell you what I got. So, all right. 
Um, but also, I'll show you how to... I also forgot to show you. So the measurement we took was, uh, was 17.5 inches. So you want to subtract that from uh, like a 1.6. Let's go with 1.5. How about that? A little more. A little less. Sorry. So 16. So we want to shoot for 16 exactly. I think we were 15 and 3 quarters. We were really close. So so I think I think it should be fine the way it is now. I think okay. I'm gonna go get that measurement again before. I know this is really hard because I have to contort my back to do this. <laughs> Okay, so I watched the video and we're like at 15 and moved it just a little bit like at 15.8 so we need to go more um, so I'm gonna go ahead I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, tighten the preload again just like how I showed you and then I'm just gonna keep on doing this until I get the right one and then I will show you the I'll show you a third measurement with the right sag on it. Um, remember, 16 is the number that I was shooting for. So uh, we're at like 15.8 or something. We're almost we're almost close to 16, but uh, I didn't. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay. So Ooh, just, okay. I'm sweating bullets right now. <laughs> okay. Um. So so I got it. I got it uh, at a six. Just about 16. Uh, 16 inches. Uh, it was the measurement that I that I last took. Um. I actually went too far. I went too far and I, I overshot 16 by little. It was like, it must have been like uh, 16 and a quarter almost. Um, so so I went and backed off the, the collar about like a half, uh, about a quarter of a turn or a quarter to like half a turn or something. And I got it pretty much right on the money. So I got 1.5 inches of sag right now. Um, if you remember, 1.6 is like, I guess the 20% number. I wanted a little less sag. Um, because I'm probably probably gonna wear more stuff when I'm riding this thing. So, but uh, for for the most part, it's pretty much set up. If anything, maybe I can add a little more preload to it. But uh, I think it's fine the way it is right now. Um, so that that is how to set up your preload, and it should probably shouldn't change unless you're adding extra weight to the bike. You know, and I, if you if you add something that makes the bike heavier, then yeah, you're probably gonna wanna set the preload but th that's why it's important to uh that's why it's important to wear as like the most gear that you would wear you know so i probably i know i probably should have worn my trail backpack on it actually so so but probably i want to do if i think i'm going to be carrying a little extra stuff i'm just going to want to just add a little extra preload to it so but yeah so so pretty much that's it that's a, that was the setting um so so here's how many threads are left on the shock so you can see we moved it quite a bit I think it was it was like half of this before there's like double the threads exposed now we still got a lot a lot of threads to go so um, this spring is pretty stiff it's a pretty stiff spring um, the bike isn't too heavy too so that probably helps too uh, but, but yeah there it is it's properly now it's properly set up so so now you probably want to take it for a spin around the block see if it handles better it should handle better um, so so before it was sagging too much um, yeah it was sagging too much so um, so it should have more it should have less rake now so the bike should turn in better uh, I was having problems cornering with this so probably gonna take it for a spin around the block right now and uh, see how it is but uh but yeah that is how you that is the video on how to uh, properly set the sag on your Suron Light B. I hope you guys learned something. Uh, that's how I do it. That's how I do it by myself. It is a lot, a lot easier and a lot less time consuming if you have a buddy with you. <laughs> um, at least to hold, you know, at least to hold the bike and to do the measurements, you know. Um, 
Yeah, you, if you could have like two buddies, it would be good. One to hold the bike and then one to actually make the measurements. Uh, but this is, I just showed you how I did it by myself. Uh, I use a camera, a tripod, and a measuring, uh, some kind of measuring device uh, when I'm using a... Uh, if anything, if I was to do this again, I would say it would be easier if I just hook this on the side of the caliper. Um, so the way the way I was measuring it was from the top of the bolt. So I was just like letting this sit on top of the bolt there and then bringing it to the fender. Um, but it was hard. It kept on slipping off and stuff. See like that slipped off. Uh, so I, if I was going to do this again, I would instead measure from where the where this caliper is there's a little shelf there's a thing underneath it so you can hook you can hook the, uh, the tape measure under here but you would be changing your measuring point by just a little bit so I would have to redo everything you know um, I would have to take the static measurement again the static measurement is really easy to take though you can literally you can literally just get on your knees and then just tilt the bike over a little bit and, and then take the measurement. It's, it's, this bike is not heavy, but this is how I would do it. I would take the measurement and hook it underneath the caliper there instead of using the top of the bolt because I was having a hard time, hard time getting this thing to sit up here flush, you know, and to see it just slips off pretty easily. So, so there you go. Um, that's a, that's, that's one thing I would do differently if I was to do this again. But. We're all set up. If anything, like I said, if anything, I would probably add a little more preload to it. It's it's good to always have a little bit of extra preload um, because you never know. You could be wearing like a backpack or something or carry a lock with you or carry a tool bag. So that's what I would do. Oh. Add a little extra preload. So, so it's, but that's why but that's why I went with the 1.5 instead of the 1.6. So, so we're at 1.6 sag right now. 1.6 inches of sag. So that lets us sit and the upper 20% of the stroke and, uh, and the bike should handle better you know and it should carry your weight better um, and, and, and it won't and you won't bottom out as much so so if you're sitting on this if you're sitting on this and you're just cranking this collar and you run out of threads that means you need a new shot uh, you need a new spring um, this one has a 450 pound inch or inch pounds uh, spring on it so that's the that's the spring that came with my light D. Um, yours may be different, but uh, but yeah, if you need to, if you run out of adjustment, that means you need a you need a stiffer spring. You need to find a, a fast A spring that is stiffer than 450 pound inches or inch pounds. Um, yeah, so maybe you would want to go do like a four 470 or 480. I don't know. I don't really know too much stuff about the fast day stuff i know this is like all mountain bike stuff so um but that's how i would do it on a motorcycle all right so i hope you guys learned something thanks for watching peace make out